This is a continuation of my series on automotive batteries. And you know, even though my channel specializes in Mercedes, the principles I'm gonna talk about in this particular video can apply to a lot of cars, particularly newer cars, those cars with computers, as most, most of them have today, as we well know. But what happened here, this is my personal car, and uh, the other day I was stuck with a dead battery. And you kind of say, well, how could that happen? Well, let me give you a little background. First, I want to show you what this battery looks like, okay? It's located in this particular car. It's located back here in the trunk. And it's a rather big battery because there are a lot of computers on this S500. So I'm going to show you the battery, and then we're going to put a, a little voltmeter on it and check the voltage. And then I'll get in and try to start the engine, and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Okay, here's the battery. It's located in the trunk on this particular car. Look at the size of this thing. Um, it is a OEM Mercedes battery. Unfortunately, when I purchased the car, there were there's no date stickers. This is an example of uh, why you want to pop those little indicators out when you do replace a battery. The next owner kind of wants to know when the battery was installed in the car. Look at how clean the battery is. We have no corrosion on the terminals, so that's not a problem. There's no corrosion down in the tray. So as far as general condition, external on this battery, it looks fine. But I'm gonna put a, a voltmeter on it. Let's see how many volts this battery has in it. If you can see the meter there, it's reading 12.1. And you say, well, Kent, that's over 12 volts. So uh, why are you having a problem you know, starting the car? Now, I'm going to, uh, in the next scene, we'll just turn the key on and you can hear what the engine's doing when I try to start the car with the battery currently in it. Okay, I'm sitting in the driver's seat. If you notice, I still have the meter hooked up to the battery. And even with the key on just for a few seconds, note that the voltage has dropped to below 12 volts. Now watch what happens when I actually turn the key and engage the starter. You see that? It's like nothing, just click. Okay, now the challenge is, what's the problem? Do we have a bad battery or is something wrong with the charging system? Let's discuss that further. Okay, it's an obviously a bad battery, right? No, not necessarily so. Uh, I don't want you to just run out and buy a new battery when you have a situation like this occur. You could have a problem with the alternator. You could have a problem with the voltage regulator if your alternator is so equipped. You could have problems with cables, bad contacts. And don't be fooled, okay? Don't be fooled just because there's no corrosion showing on those battery post clamps. You need to remove them and actually clean them. I've seen, I've seen ones that look clean, and yet when you take them off, they're corroded on the critical contact surfaces. So there's, there's a number of things that could be going on here. It's not necessarily a battery, okay? So what's the next step? Well, if you wanna check your battery out, you, you have a charger available, you have some battery testers available, you can go ahead and retest your battery by charging it and going through the whole testing sequence. I'm not going to go over that in this video because I've done a complete video on how to determine whether or not your battery really needs replacing. So be sure and check that. I'll include that in the link in the show more description below in this video. But there's another quick test you should do to make sure that it's not a charging problem. And that's what I'm going to show you now. Since this is my own car, I'm not going to run out and buy a battery until I check the voltage output of the charging system in this car. And this is really critical. I mean, extremely critical on these newer cars with a lot of computer equipment on board that your alternator is producing adequate voltage and current. If not, any, any heavy drain on the, on the battery could cause a loss of power to the computers and you're gonna have some weirdness happen. And that's, that's what exactly what happened on this car. I was driving and I was demonstrating a friend of mine how much power this thing had. And I literally floored it. And shortly after I floored it, all of a sudden a bunch of warning lights came on the dash. Now that's a really good sign that the computer kind of freaked out 
And a lot of times that's due to low voltage. I should have known right then and there, I should have, I should have just said, okay, let's go after that problem. And it was two days after this happened that I was stuck with a dead battery. So I did get fair warning. I did get fair warning, something was going on here. But I'm going to do a voltage output test right now to see how well the alternator is performing. And all you'll need is a simple 12 volt, volt, volt ohmmeter. I'm going to start the car. I'm going to have to jump the car. I'll use my booster and jump the car. And then we'll come back and we'll see how much voltage we're getting at the battery with the engine running. The engine's running. I started it up with my booster pack. It didn't take much because the battery's not uh, totally dead. And with it idling, I am going to check voltage. I put the red lead on the positive. I have this set at volts, and let's see how many volts now are showing on this battery. Look at that, we have 14, varying between 14.8, 12, and so on. That is a very good sign, and that does demonstrate that my alternator is working properly. Let's discuss a little bit more about what you saw in that last scene. Notice we had 14 plus volts. And what you're looking for, you should have at least 13.6 on any, any of these newer cars that have computer equipment on board. If you don't have 13.6 volts showing at the battery with the engine running, you're going to need to do some additional work to find out why. It could, once again, it could be a belt problem, maybe the belt slipping, the serpentine's belt, maybe you've got an alternator starting to fail or a voltage regulator. You have to solve that first. Don't go buy a new battery. Go ahead and get the battery charged. You can do some testing on the battery. But in this case, okay, in my case, I know that's an old battery. Uh, I've got great output from the alternator. And by the way, I want to install one of these new generation AGM batteries anyway. And so all I have to do now is just pull that battery out and put the new battery in, right? No problem. I mean, just a few bolts. No, you do not want to do that. That's not the way you want to do that on these computer controlled cars. And in the next part in this series, I'm going to explain why. And I'm all going to also going to talk a little bit more about the advantages of replacing your battery with one of these new generation AGMs.